Right, next up, it is our Minimax contingent. And your grid is as follows. So your grid is as follows. Apologies for that for those watching on the stream at home. It's Renaud Franco and Thomas Strauven that line up on the front row of the grid. And then it is uh, Matteo Rudenkovic and Nando Weichselbauer from Austria. Then Tam Salet from Germany with uh, Thiemann Huben in sixth place. Also, uh, we've got uh, Karol Stout and Kaspar Schormanns rounding out the top eight positions with Lawrence Herbert and Mick Vandenberg completing the top 10. Following that, it's Olivier Jonkers, then uh, Ma uh, Mathis Souvadou, and then Jasper Lehnertz, uh, who retired from the race a bit earlier on, as uh, there was a five second penalty handed out to Kaspar Schormanns for pushing, which put him down into eighth position, which is where he will start this time around. So again, 13 minutes on the clock, plus an additional lap is what we will have in terms of racing action once again for Micro Max. So, Franco Strauven. Radenkovic, Weichselbaumer, Saleh, Huben, Staud, Schormanns, Herbots, and Vandenberg. That is your top 10 here in the Minimax finale. So the revs rise, the red light now goes out, and we are off and away in Minimax, heading down towards turn one and two for the first time. A great start from Reno Frankot, and uh, Thomas Strauven gets instantly deposed through from second to third by Mateo Radenkovic and Strauven sends it up the inside of both Radenkovic and Franco. That's a brilliant move. Oh my goodness, that was a brilliant start. He dropped down to third, Franco up the inside. And I think that was Weichselbaumer that's just got passed on um, Radenkovic too. Oh my goodness me, Thomas Strauven just said, right, I'm going to do something that's going to excite everybody. And that includes the guy in the commentary box. Well, Thomas Straven, I doth my cap to thee. That was absolutely brilliant. Sent it up the inside of Radenkovic going through turn three and then uh, pounced on Franco through turn four like it was absolutely no trouble whatsoever as Nando Weichselbaumer now closing on the back bumper of the pole sitter. So in the first 60 seconds, Straven is going to have a bit of a gap here. It's 0.4 of a second ahead of Franco, Weichselbaumer, Radenkovic, Huben, Saleh, who's uh, now down into sixth place ahead of Schormanns. Jonkers up into eighth place, Vandenberg. Uh, we've also got Herbots, uh, Subadu, uh, Lennertz, and Stout rounding out the 13 strong. But that, <laughs> Thomas Stolven just got, uh, I think he had his mojo with him there. That was brilliant textbook work from the Dams Racing Team driver. So he's got a gap of four tenths of a second as now Weichselbaumer will start battling away with uh, Frankel, which will allow Radenkovic to come into the mix as they now come down uh, all the way down to turn 10. Every, every single driver is competing in this race and the whole field at the moment is separated by 5.2 seconds. Well, that is, oh my goodness, that is Carol Stout. So Carol Stout and that bumper is dragging on the left rear. And that is unfortunate for Belgium's Karl Stout out of the race. So there must have been some contact possibly going into the first lap or so 
As we're now on to uh, lap number three, Strauven now has a lead of three and a half tenths of a second ahead of Franco. Weichselbaumer waiting in the wings in, in the uh, 146 from Austria. Radenkovic from Belgium in the 196 rounds out the top four, uh, top four ahead of uh, Thiemann Huben from the Netherlands. Then it's Schormann, Saleh, Jonkers, Vandenberg, Herbots, uh, Leinertz and Subadu rounding out the 12 that are still racing. And it's a real shame for Karol Stout um, in the 143. But there are still two more races to run. One to, uh, two tomorrow, so there'll be another pre-final and a final. And one of the things that I will, I will sort of, I'm sure that most people will resonate is that if you are a racing driver, the first thing that you do not do is give up, despite all the, car, the bad cars that have been dealt in your general direction. And Carol Stout, I hope, comes back fighting tomorrow when we go racing with the first Minimax race at 13.35 local time. So nine and a half minutes left on the clock, plus an additional lap here in the Minimax final for day one here at Karting Genk. Strauben still leads, but by 0.275 of a second from Franco. Weichselbaumer, a further two tenths of a second adrift. Then it's a further 0.336 back to Matej Radenkovic from Belgium. A further six and a half tenths back to uh, Huben in fifth. Schormanns is only two tenths of a second adrift of the 105, as now uh, through turn 11 comes to 129, and that is uh, Vandenberg, who's got Herbots, and Lehnertz has now started coming back. So Lehnertz will try and go for a position as there's a side-by-side. -side. And I think that might have been, I'm not too sure who that was, that is now, uh, there's, a, there's a battle back at the uh, far end of the field and Herbots and Lehnertz are entrenched in their own battle, I think, side by side. Oh, going through turn five of all places. That's pretty gnarly when you think about it. And these young drivers still managing to keep their wits about them and keep them going, keep themselves going as the lead is now coming through turn eight. This is where it will get interesting because we are now just under five minutes into this race. And you still, I, <laughs> If I'm honest, I can't really pick a potential winner out of maybe the top four drivers who are pretty much running line astern at the moment. So Strauven starting on, on P2 alongside Pino Franco, but managed to get the run through turns three and four on the very first lap. I think that was um, that's another great move. As here we now have another battle, and there is Olivier Jonkers battling away with uh, Tam Saleh from Germany as uh, Saleh runs wide out of turn three and Jonkers up the inside. Nice job there by the Belgian. Gets the move done. Up into uh, turn six they go. And uh, Jonkers, <laughs> that was pretty textbook. You know, Saleh went into turn two, went a bit wide coming out of the corner, having hit the apex. And then Jonkers just planted it up the inside nice and cleanly, which is uh, a good race cross skill to have that where... If you can gauge a situation, you can see that the driver in front is possibly going to have a mistake on their hands. You make sure that you are prepared for any eventuality. And it's quick thinking. It's cat-like reflexes. And that is what Rino Franco is going to have right now because Nando Weichselbaumer from Austria is right on the back bumper. Coming through the final corner, we're now going to go on to lap number seven as Thomas Strauven has a, an advantage. It was three tenths. It's now 0.485 ahead of the Dutch driver with Austria being represented by Weichselbaumer as now, oh, now that was Olivier Jonkers up the inside of Huben, I think. And uh, that is the case. So, uh, yeah, Olivier Jonkers is uh, making a great resurgence, having started in 11th position. So, Karol Stout is the uh, second driver in Minimax to have retired this weekend, unfortunately, having finished with a uh, pretty um, lopsided uh, rear bumper, which was scraping on the bottom of the left-hand side. So, rather than having a mechanical black flag being thrown your way, the first thing is in a driver's instinct saying, well... My race is pretty much done because if I was brought in for mechanical black flag, my race would have been done anyway. Six minutes and five seconds on the clock still to go, plus an additional lap. And Thomas Strauven has kept it very, very consistent at the front of the field. Last time around, he put in the fastest lap of the race, and he's gone even quicker. But look at Rino Franco. He's just dropped down into the, the high 59 nines. 50, 59, 917 there. Great job by the, um, the Dutch driver. 
So, uh, in many respects, what is his gap between him and uh, Strauven? It's 0.375 of a second. Weichselbaum were a further two tenths adrift. And here now is uh, Tam Saleh, I believe, trying to uh, close up on Thiemann Huben, who has got past four position. And that is Jonkers just up ahead in P6. So these drivers having a really, really good battle. Just over five minutes of this race uh, still to go. Plus an additional lap. And the drivers at the front of the field will now come through. Strauven, Franco, Weichselbaumer, Radenkovic. And then we've had uh, Schormans. Then Jonkers. And that is uh, Huben, uh, Thiemann Huben. And also, um, well, let's see what happens as they come across the line because... I think there might be a bit of a different change here. Yeah, Huben is now in front of Saleh. Lehneritz is up into ninth place, having started from 13th. So a gain of four positions from the uh, youngster from Belgium in the 177. But in the meantime, Weichselbaumer is trying to close as uh, here comes Pam Saleh trying to close up on uh, Thiemann Huben and up the inside into turn seven, makes the move stick, does the young German, gets through nice and cleanly up into P7 and makes the move stick by the apex of turn number eight into the left at nine, down the uh, short blast into the right-hander at turn 10. So these drivers, they have been uh, keeping themselves very very occupied here and uh, it does quite clearly shows the show because they have been focused on one thing this weekend and that is going out there and racing their hearts out irrespective of where any of our drivers finish here this weekend i have the utmost respect as an observer someone who loves to see these these uh, these drivers go out there and give it their all even if they're having a bad day uh, in their personal life, they will go out and they will shut the visors down, put the race suit on, and get themselves ready to compete. And that is where I literally, I can't help but applaud every single one of these drivers um, as a professional, but also from a personal perspective, because, um, you know, these drivers are slightly younger than my, my niece at home, uh, and I have the utmost respect of these drivers that want to do this is a full-time professional career and karting is that basic start and as you progress you get better you get better indeed and now i've looked at the top three drivers that are leading battling for the lead as time Saleh trying to go up the inside of olivier yonkers through turn two into turn three now into turn four the germans on the back bumper of the belgian but yonkers not giving any room for the German to breathe and also the opportunity to get past. But now they go onto the back straight away. Saleh really in the toe behind Jonkers, pulls out to the right hand side, will get the run and gets the move done into turn seven for P6. And in many respects, these, uh, these drivers, I, 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 I mean, if you stuck me in a cart, uh, the first thing I would do is go, well, how slow am I going to be is my first reaction. <laughs> but these youngsters are driven. They, they have a purpose. They, they enjoy their racing. We enjoy seeing them compete out on circuit weekend in, weekend out. As now, Reno Franco has just gone about a tenth of a second quicker than Thomas Strauven and is 0.267 of a second behind the current leader who has been leading pretty much from turn four on lap one, having been alongside Franco on the front row of the grid. So into the last 90 seconds of uh, the, uh, the Minimax action here. So Reno Franco is trying to see if he can close on the back bumper of Thomas Strauven and uh, look to do repeat the feat that Max Sadursky has done this weekend and take two wins here this afternoon. But I'm sure that Straven is going to very much have something to say about that. And by putting in the performance that he has so far, being very, very consistent indeed, is uh, it's just keeping his head down, looking forward, just putting the blinkers on. But then he puts that, he puts, has a little look around the right hand shoulder uh, to, um, to see if someone's there. Because now he's got 46 seconds on the clock remaining. 
plus an additional lap. So I think with the pace that they're running at, they will get the final lap board when they come round the final corner this time around. But Franco, I don't think is done yet. He will then see, as they'll have looked at the gantry possibly when they came round uh, last time, to see how much time was on the clock. Because now, look how close Franco is. As they go down into turn 10, and Franco is going to wait and bide time. Wait until the opportunity to strike is there. So the timer is now expiring this second. Last lap board it is. Just under 1,300 metres to go as Franco goes and tries to go for it. And Strauven is absolutely having none of it. The pair side by side going into turn three. Oh, Strauven was nearly, uh, you know, there was a little bit of bump drafting there, I must admit. Uh, and that could, I mean, I'm not too sure how much uh, co constitutes pushing. Oh, goodness me, Franco goes for it and runs over the back bumper of Strauven. And that has compromised his run for a race victory. But this, in the meantime, now is that Nando Weichselbaumer? That is Weichselbaumer now on the back bumper of Strauven. So one person's uh, misfortune is another one's gain. And now Strauven is going to try and outfox Austria's Nando Weichselbaumer. What a dramatic conclusion to this race on the final lap. As now Strauven is going to go defensive. Weichselbaumer is trying to sweep around the outside and cut back through. He's going to get the run, but I don't think he's going to get it. Strauven wins, punches the air with both hands. And Weichselbaumer could have just... Oh, if he'd have had another lap, you know what that would have meant. Weichselbaumer could have had it. But it goes to Thomas Strauven. Reno Franco, even though he ran over the back bumper of... Um, of uh, sorry, my apologies there. I just had to quickly grab some results before they flew out the window. Um, Reno Franco, if that had not happened, I pretty much think that it would be... <laughs> they're just discussing what's happened, I think. He just said, what happened to you? Yeah, Reno just went over my back bumper. <laughs> That's just a casual little conversation be between Minimax drivers, but congratulations. Proficiat to uh, Thomas Strauven for the victory here um, for the Minimax final. And he wins by 0 0.059 seconds ahead of Nando Weichselbama with Rino Francot in third, Matteo Radenkovic in fourth, ahead of Kaspar Schormans and Tam Saler from SP Motorsport running out the top six. Then it was Olivier Jonkers, Demon Huben, Jasper Lenitz running out the top nine ahead of Mick Vandenberg. Lawrence Herbots, Matthew Subadu, with unfortunately Carol Stout retiring on the very first lap.